name's Susie and I'm going to tell you a story and this is a true story. There was once a boy named Hugo Grin. He was a Jewish boy who lived with his father, mother, younger brother and sister and they lived in a small town called Berehavo which used to be in what was called Czechoslovakia. He grew up in a beautiful big house with an orchard and a vineyard. Hugo's dad was a timber merchant and owned part of a thriving sawmill business. They lived with neighbours who were both Jewish and non-Jewish and they all got along well. It was a happy childhood. But when Hugo was 13, his world got turned upside down. Hitler and his Nazis were trying to take over the world and were beginning to persecute the Jewish people. Hugo and his family were forced to leave their home and live in a poor, squalid, dirty ghetto. They had lost everything the beautiful big house, the orchard, the vineyard, all that life and laughter was gone. Jewish families were sent to be resettled and could only take one suitcase each, but they weren't resettled. They were being sent to death camps. One day, Hugo and his family were told to pack up a suitcase and leave to be resettled. Hugo was just 13 years old when he made that journey to Auschwitz. He was separated from his mum, brother and sister. On the train, Hugo was desperately thirsty. The train was cramped, his throat was dry, but his dad had no drink to give him. Hugo had never known thirst like it. And when they arrived at Auschwitz, prisoners from the camp started getting the people off the train. Hugo's dad kept hearing the words in Yiddish, the Jewish language, you are 18 and you have a trade. Hugo's dad understood and he turned to Hugo. He whispered in his ear, Hugo, I've never asked you to lie before, but when you get off this train, you're going to say you are 19 and you're a carpenter. I'm 19 and I'm a carpenter, yes. So Hugo and his father were sent to the part of the camp where they had to work. All they got to eat was one food ration per day. Every evening they got a meagre piece of bread with a small bit of margarine on. Hugo noticed that his dad would scrape off the margarine and put it in a pot that he kept under his bed every evening. It annoyed Hugo. They were starving, yet his dad seemed to be saving the margarine. For what? Was he attempting to make an age-defying face cream for their deathly pale faces? Or enter a competition for the, the most exquisite margarine sculpture? or save it to grease the wheels on their non-existent bikes that they hadn't got, that they couldn't ride anywhere. He just didn't see the point. But he didn't say anything. His dad seemed to need to do it. Hugo's dad did it for many days, scraping the margarine into the little pot and putting it under his bed. Then it came time that they would have celebrated Hanukkah, the Jewish festival of light where they remember and celebrate taking back their temple off the Greeks who stole it and rededicating it to God. That night, Hugo's dad gathered all the prisoners in their sleeping quarters and they sat huddled on the bare floorboards watching Hugo's dad as he took out the little pot of margarine from under his bed. He scraped the margarine into eight little piles representing the eight candles of Hanukkah and he put a little piece of string in each pile and then he took a match and lit the string. But the margarine did not burn. He struck the match again and held it, but no flame appeared. He tried again and again. Unbeknown to Hugo's dad, the margarine had been watered down and there was not enough fat in it to burn. Or well, Hugo, he lost it. He went mad. Why? You, why do you scrape off the margarine? We're starving. Why are you saving? For what? It, it won't light. It won't burn. It's stupid. Why are you even doing this? But Hugo's dad took him by the arm. And he sat him on the floorboards and he looked him square in the face. Hugo, sometimes we have had to live three days without food. Once on that train, you had to go three hours without drink. But I cannot live three minutes without hope. And Hugo, he learned the lesson of his life that night. Hope, we can't live without it. 
and we don't have to. There is a hope that does not disappoint. There is a light and it never goes out. The light shines in the darkness and 2020 has not overcome it. He is the light. He is the hope of glory. His name is Jesus. Emmanuel, God, light, love with us always.